to my channel. It's your girl Shami here and I'm back with another video. So as you could tell that this is my Sunday inspirational I guess so to say. Still haven't really came up with a name for this y'all but don't worry that'll be here very soon. But before we go any further, if you have not hit that subscribe button, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as that post notification bell so you can be notified each and every time I upload a video. And without further ado, let's jump straight into the word. Okay, y'all, so I have this Bible app on my phone. I'm pretty sure that a lot of y'all have that Bible app on your phone too. But um, I read daily Bible plans just you know you know help me get in my word every day and to keep me on track and just make sure that I'm I'm always getting something fed to me so that I'm never without so I went ahead and subscribed to a plan called loving your husband well by Lisa Lisa Jacobson now this word it doesn't have to be you don't have to be married to read this but the word that I got out of this when I was reading it earlier this week was she was talking about she was talking about ways to love your husband um and one of the things that she talked about was just being a listening ear she said her husband was always her listening ear and she always knew that she could always go to him whenever she had an issue about something so one day she decided to switch roles and instead of her instead of her being him being her listening ear, she switched the roles and she was his listening ear. And just by her making that small little switch, she was able to understand that her husband needs somebody there for him too. Um, he had so many fears. He had doubts. He had goals that he wanted to go through. He was frustrated. He was this, that, and the third that she didn't know about because he just didn't never tell her. And... He always felt like he needed to be there for her so she decided to go ahead and be there for him and she said this was something that she will always do from there on was always be his listening ear as well as he was her listening ear um now the word that I got from that it can go two ways now we should be a listening ear to others because I know that we have friends family anybody who needs to get things off of their chest and there are people out there that desperately need just somebody who can just be there just to hear what you have to say. You don't have to sit here and try to fix the situation that they're going through. It's better just to sit back and just let them get it off of their chest. Because if they don't get it off of their chest, they're just holding things in and just building stress and causing anxiety and mental breakdowns and depression and all this. And right now, y'all, mental health awareness needs to be brought more forefront especially in the black community because especially black african-american women we feel like we have to put on this whole stigma of us being strong 24 7 and by being strong we feel like nobody can see us cry we can't have breakdowns we always need to be just up ready and going at all times just to be there for our family and not taking care of us by us not taking care of us who's going to be there when something really happened for your family you have nobody there for them you were that person so if we don't take care of us we can't be there for our family so we need to start being there for each other just just be a listening ear to somebody somebody needs that listening ear and another thing that we need to realize is that Taking care of our mental health is okay. There's nothing wrong with you if you have mental issues. Everybody has something mentally going on that they just need better help with, coping with. And it is fine. It And you might just need to go get professional help. That's something that I'm looking for, that I'm looking into myself at this very moment. I plan on going to get therapy. I mean, it is what it is. I just feel like I need that professional atmosphere where I can just vent, get off my chest, whatever I need, but have that professional person there also to help me get through it. Not just to have somebody who's just going to talk to me or, I mean, not have somebody who's just going to be there to listen to me. But if you don't want to go through therapy, you have to find somebody who can, who you can truly trust to give you or just to 
be able to just tell things, personal things, too, that you can trust. Who's not going to run back and tell this, that, and the third what was going on with you or in your family or something. That's just not right. So... We can be that listening ear for somebody. The lady has said that she did to her husband that she made sure that she was keeping in her mind while she was listening to him was listen to what he has to say. Don't try to interfere with anything he has to say and don't try to change or to fix whatever issues or problems he was going through. Just be there to listen. And that's what we need to do. We don't need to try to sit here and fix things because I guarantee you, Although we have good intentions and our mind and our heart is in the right place to help or to want to help, we can probably end up doing more damage to that person than we really realize. We It wasn't our intentions, but just saying or giving the wrong advice ain't the right time or place to do that. We just need to listen. Now, what we need to do, and I'm going to say this, because just when I was, um, a couple weeks ago, I needed to talk to my friend about something and I love her to death. I'm so glad that, you know, she's there. And I told her I was going through something. I mean, I just needed to talk. I needed to get some things off of my chest. And the first thing she did, she was like, hold on, let's go ahead and pray. We prayed and then we carried on with whatever we needed to talk about. And that's what we need to do before we go step forth into being that listening ear for our friend, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, cousin, grandma, whoever it is. We need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come in. The Holy Spirit needs to be in the presence while we are going through what we're going through. And by allowing him to come into it, he should be the one who changes, restores, flips, turns, Whatever it is that he's he's going to do because he knows what he needs to do and he knows how to do it better than we could even imagine us trying to help that person in need. He knows how to do it. So we need to actually allow him to come into the conversation with us and let him change, fix whatever it is that they're going through. So what we, okay, so this is what we need to be. We need to be that gap. I mean that bridge to fill in the gap. In between the person in need and the Holy Spirit. That's what, what we should be. We should be that gap to fill it in so he can easily hear, see, understand everything that's going through at that very moment while they're telling us. So he can come in and change it. And trust and believe, he will. He will most definitely change it. If our hearts are in the right place, our minds in the right place, and our intentions are in the right place, he will do any and everything that we can only, um, no, we can't even imagine what he could do. He could change that situation at the drop of a dime, flip it, turn it in ways that we never would have expected it and everything would be okay. Now, the second word that I got from reading that, that plan at that very moment was that we also need to, we also need somebody to be a listening ear to us. Now, that listening ear can be a friend or somebody like that you trust, like I said earlier. But really, y'all, our listening ear needs to be God. He's the best listener. He already knows what it is that we're going through. He already knows what it is that we are struggling with and what we're going to say to him before we even come to him with it. So why not just go to him? He already knows it. He already knows it. So just go ahead and tell him what it is that we're going through. And... One thing that I learned, there's not supposed to be a special way that you come to God about anything, y'all. We should be so comfortable with talking to God that we just talk to him as if we're talking to our friends, as if we're talking to our sister, our mama, our, our husbands, our wives, our boyfriends, whoever it is. We should be that comfortable with coming to him and talking to him about anything. There's not, you don't have to be there and be all proper and have the right protocols, the right sayings, the right words that you're supposed to say when you're talking to God. Talk to him. He understands. There has been moments and I had to excuse myself and told God, please forgive me. But that's just how I feel at this very moment. I'm mad. I don't understand what it is that you are doing. I just, I, there's no other way that I can put it. I am angry and I am mad. So excuse my tone. But he understands that. He knows that. He has compassion for us because of that. Um, so he is the best person who we should go to, y'all. 
Not saying that we don't have that God doesn't have people in our lives that we are supposed to go to to help us through situations because we're not supposed to go through this thing alone. He puts people in place for us so we can have an extra word coming to us from his people. Not home girl, not shorty girl, not not sis over there who always running her mouth and likes to tell everybody business. No, not that one. That ain't the one who we should be going to. There are people in place for us that we can go to in our time of need. So God, number one, and then that special person as number two. But don't let it be somebody who doesn't even have their head on straight. Don't let it be, although you trust them, don't let it be somebody who still like, for instance, say you got issues in your relationship. Don't go to girl, home girl over there who can't keep a boyfriend no longer than two days. Don't do that. Don't go to show the girl who got this, that, and the third lined up around the corner. But she want to sit here and tell you what to do to try to fix your relationship. That's not how, that's, that's not what we do. That's not where we want to go. Make sure this person is trustworthy. And better yet, make sure this person has the Lord in their heart also. Because by us just going to somebody who has no relationship with God, what godly advice can they give? What advice can they give us to make sure that we're still on the right path with God and that we're getting filled and whatever taking care of us from within? It doesn't make sense, y'all. So what I'm trying to say is we have to surround ourselves with... People who believe in the same thing as you, who understands the same things are, as you. And I don't mean like, what I mean by that is God. There's no other way to put it. You have to find people who believe in the same thing as you to help you move forward. Surround ourselves with like-minded people at all times because you can't be out here trying to get, trying to, all right, I'm going to put it like this. You can't be trying to get out the hood but you sitting here still hanging with the crackheads on the corner. But your whole goal is to move in a mansion somewhere. You can't, we can't do that. We can't do that anymore. So to get ourselves mentally fixed, we have to surround ourselves with mentally stable, God-fearing people, y'all. I mean, I literally can count on my fingers how many friends I have now. I, I'm not ashamed of it. I was just telling my husband this. I'm not ashamed of the amount of friends that I have anymore. I mean, it's okay. It's okay to not have this big circle. And I feel like with social media going on nowadays that everybody feels like you have to be known by this, that, and third, and the third person just to even, you know, be out here anymore. I don't care about that stuff anymore. That was that was in my younger days when I cared. But then for real, for real, I really didn't even care back then. So, we don't have to have this big group of people in our lives anymore. As long as we have who we need, even if it's two people, three people, that's all you need. Let, let's focus more on ourselves. Because, like I said, without us, how is your family going to keep moving on without you? You're the head of everything. You're the one that keep everything in control. You're the one that feed everybody, you know, you don't want to take care of the house. What happens when you're not well anymore? We, we, everything's going to go downhill. And not only that, who, who wants to be walking around here with all this going on in their head and pretending like everything is okay? Not me. I want to seriously feel inside and out the way that I look. If I look good, I want to feel the same way on the inside. I don't want to be crying and screaming for help on the inside, but too afraid to open my mouth and not tell somebody or get the help anymore. I'm over that. That's not where we're going to be at this year. So, I don't want to talk y'all head off anymore, but my whole thing is, y'all, we need to be listening ears as well as reaching out to others who we know that needs help also. Now, I'm not sitting here saying that, oh, I know you had an issue over here. Well, I seen that on y'all was arguing and you just go... Y'all just broke up or something. You want to talk about it? I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not telling you to do that. If they want to open up and talk to you, make sure you are that listening ear, but make sure you are not trying to fix their issues. Don't give them advice. If, if Okay, now that's, that's kind of hard because some people want you to give them advice. 
but before you open your mouth and say something make sure that your mind and your heart is lined up with God before you sit here and try to give somebody advice on something and give and steer them the wrong way or better yet just tell them I'm not in the place to sit here and say to give you advice but we can pray about it and God will help God will come and fix this whole thing for you like let's let's be that let's be that friend for those who need who are in need and I just pray that you have somebody in your corner as well that can be there for you when you need that help because it's nothing like having a really really good friend in your corner even if it's your husband even if it's your boyfriend anybody you know because we're not meant to go through this thing all alone God has people here for us so let's use those people and let's be that person to somebody else so y'all that was my word for this week I hope it touched you in some type of way and just as always let us pray dear Heavenly Father I thank you for this moment once again God to give your people a word God I help us to understand that it's okay not to be mentally stable because whatever it is that we're going through you can change it you can fix it but we have to allow ourselves to even admit that we have an issue and to be able to go to people better yet go to you with our issues God and I just pray that for those of us who aren't as strong at that moment to even want to come to you or try to fix it and self cope um, with issues that are going on at that very moment God I just pray that you can intercede stop them I just pray that whatever it is that they're trying to do to not reach out to you God that you can change all of that God please make yourself aware in everyone's lives God that make everyone know that you are there for them and them only God allow us all to be able to comfort each other in our times of need be there for each other when we need it God and I just pray that you can continue to keep blessing and keeping us all God in this crazy world that we are living in at this very moment God it's in Jesus name that I pray amen but that's it. I'll see y'all next week. Bye.